Okay, thank you, reporting lady. Yeah, so today we'll talk about price setting. Okay, so uh, before I go into anything, right, again, uh, expectation. So uh, actually for price, right, it's really a subjective thing. And then, uh, you know, maybe if let's say you enter your Isaac term and then go outside, you do BD, right? Uh, don't die, die, follow whatever I tell you here, okay? I mean, different company have different practices and different price setting logic or thought process also. Yeah, so I'm not telling you which is correct or which is wrong, but more of a sharing of experience and then also giving you my perspective. Huh? Yeah, and then again, uh, things wouldn't happen if you're unclear with your purpose or objective in the partnership, in the sales you want to go for. So if you're not clear why you want to talk to this partner or even uh, why you want what value and provide to this partner, right, then uh, chances are no matter how, how many pricing setting things you learn, or you wouldn't be able to close your sales also. And things will only happen when you sincerely take action. Uh. Same goes with, let's say, you left Isaac already to do some other sales, even including D2C sales also, but that's another conversation, okay? Yeah, so I think here, right, let's look into this thing, right? So I think you guys know this, what is this, right? Yeah, some of you guys have. Uh, I don't have, I have a Mac, but I don't have an iPhone, okay? Yeah, so uh, have you ever asked why? an iPhone costs you 5,000. I don't know, maybe you can give me your authentic answers. Hey, don't jump the slide, by the way. <laughs> or you just buy, I don't know. Brand, brand hype. Okay, probably that might be the reason, but actually I'm just <laughs> asking as simple as, have you ever asked, like question, eh, why this thing is this price or not? But maybe some of you guys would think about, oh, it's because of quality then, oh no, okay, Z no. Okay, some, some of you guys is, I just only use iOS. Okay, but that's, that's another conversation. Okay, so let's go into the next one, right? So uh, what you get as a customer, right? At least on the surface level, uh, normally what you do know is you get what's the phone, the software, the technology, and then, you know, uh, you get the uh, quality. And then some of you guys also mentioned the branding, which might be the reason, uh, not might be, which is actually the reason that you buy an uh, iPhone also. Yeah, like show of status. So uh, what you... Like on the consumer level, uh, normally what you think about is these few things, right? But actually what you are paying for, it's not only those three things, but including your brand, intellectual pro property, you know, uh, Apple's overhead costs, their marketing fees, like all the videos or keynotes that they create, uh, their operation costs, like their office holdings, you know, at Apple, the what, Silicon Valley, yeah, the materials, the technology, all these things. So you may not be conscious in terms of uh, what you're actually uh, paying for. I mean, uh, some of you guys may, may be conscious in terms of brand, but others, you know, maybe you don't even care. Yeah, but actually you do, you, you are actually paying for all these things. So same goes with, you know, as simple as this uh, chicken McNugget, right? So I wouldn't ask you again this question, but then again, why uh, six keys of nugget uh, cost you for 15 ringgit, right? Yeah, I mean, consider now the pricing. Uh. Yeah, so you get the sauce and then you get Coke or fries. Yeah, but actually what uh, you are paying for is actually more than that. Lah. So again, you are paying for, you know, even the franchise fees, their overhead costs, uh, all the costs behind also. So they require all these things to actually uh, set it as, okay, we are selling it 15 bucks like that. Yeah, so of course we don't uh, tell our customer literally what does it cost also. Like, uh, you know, when the, I don't know, the, the Apple store uh, agent or maybe the cashier at, uh, McDonald's wouldn't tell you, hey, uh, whatever you buy uh, is paying for my salary. So uh, they wouldn't do that. Yeah, but uh, it's not because they, they cannot say or anything. Uh, but actually, right, it, it doesn't really matter. Uh. So maybe, again, going back for iPhone, right, some of you do care about the brand, but chances are maybe you don't even call, uh, care about how, like, what is the intellectual property price, everything, and then, you know, like, what is the franchise fee that you are paying for? But then it is uh, what, is inside lah. Yeah. But what I'm telling you, this is, you know, what matters is whether this is worth it to me or you as a customer. So the highlight here is worth it to me or you as a customer, lah, which goes back towards the at start thing I mentioned is pricing is very, very subjective. And uh, that's why I think a lot of us like, uh, it's very heavy. Okay, how should I price? Should I price this, price that or not? You know, like how different people perceive is also different like that, all these things. And uh, if let's say that's a so-called standard pricing among uh, everything already, right, then that there's no need in terms of having different companies. Also, I mean, the market wouldn't exist also. 
Yeah. So when looking into pricing, right? So that I would say there are two things that uh people would look into, like especially for let's say IGB sales. Uh. So I was sometimes my face. Uh, the first one is the pricing and partnership amount. I mean, definitely. So how much or how worthy is your value proposition? So for this, it actually shows uh, how much you're confident with the value that you're bringing to the table also. Uh, like how much, do, how much value do you think you're providing? So that's why you open this pricing. And the second one is cost structure. So the cost needed to run a project and then every item a uh, person needed to in the project quantify it into account. So which which means uh, what the cost is really spending for. So going back towards the introduction of this session, right, uh, is people don't really care about the cost structure. But then I would say, at least internally, when we are setting it, uh, we do need to keep in mind. And the reality is uh, when we are running things related to CSR community, uh, some partners might request for this. But I can honestly, honestly tell you, right, based on my experience so far, is out of 10 or even 20, only one partner asked for this. The remaining don't really care about this, but this thing you do need to know, and that's why it's in our DMF. But again, uh, you don't need to actually, I know some of you guys show this to partner, but I think some of you guys also have conversation with you before. It's showing this to your partner doesn't make them want to buy because in the end of the day, it depends on whether it's worth it to them or not. So you tell them you have this cost, that cost, they don't really care. They care about what value it brings to them. Like, you know, how much quality I'm getting, not whether you got operation cost or marketing fee or not. Yeah, but some people do ask us. So that's why we are having this conversation right now. Yeah, so let's dive a little deeper into cost structure. So let's compare these two types, right? Yeah, so for this one, you know, actually uh, you can okay, just see the slide uh, for yourself. Yeah, so you, you said in terms of how it looks like this. So for this kind of uh, cost structure, right? Actually, there is one thing, two things you need to keep in mind. So one thing is you are literally telling your partner that your human resource is free labor, which uh, is already what everyone is thinking. La. Yeah, I mean, it is true that, uh, you know, we don't pay volunteers like that, but then uh, you are telling them it is the, you know, free cheap labor or even free labor itself. Yeah, because you completely didn't include any HR. And then second thing is also your partnership amount maximally can also only go into 1,000 or, you know, even 3,000. Okay? No, it's not 3,000, it's 1,000 here. Yeah, because you also have marketing costs. So... If let's say today I'm a partner looking at this, right? Or maybe looking at the overall thing. So why do I need to pay you 3,000 when your project only need 1,000? So it doesn't make sense also. And in fact, when you set your pricing, I mean, the quotation you charge your partner, right? Uh, ideally should be lower than the cost structure you set. Like, so you're not relying on one partner in terms of everything also. Okay, but that is not the too important part. Because again, uh, people don't really look at the cost structure. Yeah, so the second type, right? Uh, is you are including all the resources needed and you are setting a price for them. So your volunteers fee, you have like, let's say you charge it 100 and then uh, 12 units, okay, 12 people. And then here you can be more flexible in terms of playing around with your partnership amount as the maximum amount would be 9,000, uh, 9,100 to be specific, okay? So maybe you can charge this partner three or 4,000, but uh, it's to cover the overall thing. Okay, so uh, why am I telling you guys in terms of uh, this cost structure thing? And then I think some of you guys also asked before, right? Uh, should I set it uh, based on the actual number that I spend or based on, you know, uh, how much like I think it costs like that, uh, which is, for example, you don't actually spend 100 on one volunteer, but then you're still setting. So should you go with this one? So my suggestion is you should go with this one instead. So why should you go with this one, right? Because, uh, okay. Not because. So let's go into this one, okay? So if you still remember your DMF, right? So for EWA tips, then maybe uh, you don't know why it's this. Yeah, because EWA don't have audit, but this one you confirm, no. So this is the cost structure template. Yeah, but then uh, there's a reason why DMF designed to have these few things. And there's a reason why uh, when I share you guys the portfolio uh, design framework, then I also, you know, put in this small message and all of it is related one. So I uh, wouldn't want to re waste you guys' uh, manpower in terms of uh, building all these things up. But all of it, these things are connected. Okay, so let me demonstrate how I work with it. So we can go towards the general portfolio here. So uh, I hope you often, I mean, not often, I hope you often uh, go to this sheet. So to refer on things, uh, unless that you finish your uh, things already, eight plus one. Okay, never mind. Yeah, so you can look around here. So I, I'll just demonstrate, right? I haven't write anything. Yeah, so let's say today my HR, I count it as eight. You need cost a hundred, right? Okay, let's say I run this initiative, need five people. So this is for what? Uh, volunteer, okay. 
OC OC public speaking lah. Okay, the public speaking competition. Okay, so your volunteers here, right? So let's say today here, I set this thing as maybe, okay, example, this thing 1,000, this thing 2,000. So why does this uh, cost structure still matter, right? It's because when you're setting it, let's say uh, today you set your OC team 100, right? Then uh, today, okay, the partner say, oh, I want to have more B40 student participants. So you need more volunteers to actually recruit more schools. And then you need more volunteers to actually be the FASI to run for the thing. So even though you're setting the same initiative, but then because your commitment, all those uh, increase already, then uh, you also set here the benchmark that you are going to set as 100, right? Then, uh, okay, I'm going to recruit maybe another five more, okay? So let's say it's 10. So here I should increase at least, you know, 1,500. So here is how all these things are related. And in terms of how it's related towards the business model canvas, uh, actually you don't design it uh, just to send things to, for your MCVP, which is me to check. Because when you set this, you synergy with IGV, you also look into, okay, what's the resources you need? Like how much uh, effort or manpower do you need to uh, put in all those things? And then from there, okay, you know, let's say I set the pricing benchmark is this, right? Then when I change on things, okay, let's say I change on this one, need to have higher, more people, right? Then uh, this one I should increase. Then you know how to change and plug and play around. Yeah, in, in terms of this one right here, I have a few in terms of the benchmark price, but again, how you want to set <clears throat> will be fully up to you. And how I set this, right? So we have a one, two, three, four, five, like one to 10, right? So again, it's going back towards the pain part that the more value you provide, the pain that you tackle more or bigger, then uh, you can charge higher. Again, okay? the keyword is can charge, uh, but you can consider not charging, but uh, it'll be a waste of opportunity. And then that's why you also need to look into, uh, that's why I put these few things. So in terms of the business model canvas, you do need to look into your, project team, how much effort do they need to spend in terms of uh, doing all this? And also you yourself, you as the, how say, the partnership team, right? Actually, you also have all those commitment. In fact, you can factor in like maybe even OGV commitment to put in also. Yeah, but here it's just for your understanding so that you know, okay, if let's say today, you know, I need seven people here and then three people here. Okay, let me put this like this. Yeah, but then this thing is maybe uh, one and one then uh, maybe you should charge this higher also. Or maybe if you identify like this, but then uh, based on maybe market rate, okay? Let's say this is 2,000, but this is 5,000. Then probably you should focus on selling this more, okay? Which brings me to the next one. So market rate. So you do need to check around in terms of your overall area. Uh, how to say? Like uh, people who are doing similar events like that. So, uh, like how much are they charging? And then uh, in terms of the market cost also, so how much does it cost to actually run this? So this is going back towards your cost structure. And that's why I say in terms of your cost structure, you should set it based on, you know, let's say if you are a company or for-profit like that, then if you were to run things like this, right, how much uh, do you, should you cost? And then the actual cost for us also. So that's how you set the pricing in terms of the logic. But of course, today l and wouldn't stop at here. Like, I mean, if, if that's the case, then I would have mentioned it earlier. So uh, to, to go back a bit on the basics of business, right? So the more effort you put, the more you should charge. Yeah, that's one thing. And then the other thing is also uh, make sure you cover your costs, okay? So, so far at this point, I hope you get because I'll go even deeper, okay? So by putting all these things into practice, right? So you have, you know, the foundational thing, the stepping stone in terms of this uh, cost structure thing. So, uh, I mean, if you do want to skip on, skip towards starting on here, uh, I'm fine with it. But then you, uh, I would suggest that you really have the clear logic or thought process behind. Or else, uh, if suddenly you change the price, then partner might have confusion. Hey, why are you suddenly changing the price? And then it will cause distrust also. So that's why we have these tools uh, step by step. Yeah. Then, okay, moving on. So looking into another example on pricing, right? So it's actually this one. Yeah. So here I'll actually show you. So uh, actually all these things, right? Like at first your cost structure, your business model canvas, it will evolve into this portfolio thing. And then whatever you set on your portfolio will evolve to become your actual proposal or actual quotation, your pricing itself. So maybe this one, I share it full screen. Yeah. So this is actually an actual proposal that we actually sent to a partner and currently are talking to that. But this was the one that we sent them last year. So from here, this is more on the, I think, mix of EWA and mix of EWA and IGV one, like this one, the national one. So from here, you can see uh, because that, uh, okay, let me go back here. 
So this is more like the unit item, right? But here is more on the deliverable. So I think you, uh, you guys are familiar with deliverable right, already, right? So I wouldn't emphasize much in terms of what is a deliverable, okay? Yeah, but each deliverable also have its own pricing being set. Yeah, so you can go to see here and then we have the timeline, the impact, how much. And then each item, right? Uh, they also have its certain pricing. And then uh, it might happen the case, let's say, you know, partner want this, let's say they only want YSF and one eco break, but they don't want opportunity fair. Then we can play around the, uh, not actually play around, it's just pluck it out, pluck out the quotation, like pluck out this 2,500, then the total would become, uh, you know, 1,000, 17,500 like that. So moving on, another example is also the same. So for this one, right, it's also a national partner I'm talking to, almost closing sales. Uh, I'm sending MOA to them tomorrow. So this is, uh, Okay, this one, right, I'm even more simplified. It's I just didn't do something like this. I just straight away put the total cost here. So that's why I say, uh, okay, at least on my experience, partner don't really care about your cost structure. They only care about the total price is how much and then whether this thing is worth it to them or not. Yeah, so for this exact partner, right, so uh, we were in negotiation also, and this partner really did care a lot in terms of the uh, workshop that we run with the school like that. So are we able to engage with the school, uh, have manpower to actually run a workshop or not? But for the branding and publicity, right, actually they don't care as much and they just tell us that they can do it themselves and even for press release, uh, they also offer us, hey, uh, we are doing press release, you okay if we include you or not? Like that. So negotiation would be another R&D, but then for this one, right, actually what happened in the end is actually, uh, okay, partner asked if the price can be lower or not. Yeah, then uh, I let her know, okay, it can be, but then we need to remove the press release. So I can give you a deduction of a thousand, but then the press release would need to be removed like that. Yeah, so we can go with a 6,000 like that. Yeah, and then this was the actual one that I sent her in the end. Like she just asked me, she because she need to send to her upper management. So she just asked me to send this one, the one that without a press release. Like that, one. yeah. So uh, when you are very clear in terms of all your unit costs and in terms of, each of your deliverable, how much should it be charged, right? Then you would be able to be very flexible and comfortable to plug and play to swap out all the things that are not necessary. For example, for this partner, they really don't care about press release. Then I can just swap it out like that. Yeah. So uh, that's why in terms of how we should price all these things. Huh? So going next one. So when you ask about how you should price, right? So uh, the first thing to look into is your competitive advantage. So, uh, you know, why should they even partner with us? And then what is the worth that we are providing? So for example, just now the one that I mentioned here, uh, the example is more on the e-class here, like the workshop with the students. And then why must they do it with us, but not with others? So this is also up to you to answer yourself. So do you do your competitor research or not? Because there might be other clubs that might be doing something similar. And then they might be offering lower price also. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, but my experience wise, not, not much stuff. But you do still need to survey, survey among your competitor. And then uh, there might be other organization that can offer the same. So if you have more competitive advantage, more worth, uh, you know, and it's only you can provide this, then uh, you can charge higher. Uh, but again, I would still strongly suggest this you actually go back towards the deliverable by deliverable. Like you can purposely charge higher for a partner in terms of certain deliverable. But I think you, uh, for my opinion, I think you should set a more fixed price in terms of, okay, this thing I want to set how much. And then let's say you do the sales. Okay, maybe the market rate is lower or maybe partner acceptable range is lower then you adjust. Or maybe they can accept higher then you increase higher like that. And also the fourth thing is also set your price based on your line item and deliverable. So again, it's going back towards my example just now, right? So it's based on the, so sometimes some partner may call it line item, we call it deliverable. Lah. So for my deliverable, the price, uh, the press release was worth a thousand. So if let's say partner want to be lower and then she don't really care about this, then I just take it out like that. Yeah. So because it's a reflection of the value pro you provide, and this is what we call value-based pricing. So if today, right, uh, like I tell partner, oh, we can go with 6,000, but then I didn't remove everything. Then if your partner, what would you think? I mean, if I was partner, I would think, oh, okay. So the same kind of thing, but uh, it can be lower, right? Then I'll just go lower and lower until you are okay with it like that. And it will, in a way, also be a bit confusing. Okay, so how do you actually set your pricing? So like, like this, hey, why suddenly can lower or why suddenly higher? So when you set a proper portfolio, 
I mean, for me, I'm more risk adverse. Uh. When you set a proper portfolio, then uh, things would have a logic and it's based on the value you provide. Uh. So it's the same thing as if, as on your iPhone, right? So the more you pay, then the more features you get. And then you buy the one that you require the feature. So you don't need three cameras, then you don't pay for it like that. But if today, right, suddenly iPhone 13 Pro is like 2000, then everyone will, will just buy it. And then I, uh, Apple will go bankrupt like that. Yeah. So now after I explain this whole thought process, right, actually it's the whole thing already. Lah. Yeah. So we'll go into working space. So uh, I think some of your cost structure, maybe you need to revise, then you can revise. And if let's say you finish revising already, then you can also straight away go into your portfolio, which is, okay, the portfolio, ah, this one. Yeah, you can straight away amend on here, then maybe uh, I can feedback on the spot also. Uh. Yeah, so uh, we'll go with 15 minutes, one round. So the 15 minutes, uh, you go with your LC to actually decide. So you just need to, I mean, in this working space, uh, you just select one project to revise the cost structure. Or if you have enough time, then you uh, do the other one, uh, but you don't need to do too many. And then afterwards, uh, also attach the link. Like now you can just attach already. Uh, if let's say you are working on the portfolio only, then you maybe just want to share your portfolio, then you just put, okay, portfolio here. Like you don't put the link, okay? But it would be best that you can share all of it. Then uh, you have 15 minutes to feedback each other on round two, uh, but we'll go with round one first, okay? So let me set up the, oh, but before I open into breakout room, right? Any questions? Uh, in terms of like press release, right? Why why do we set only like one k? Ah, okay. So uh, that's that's no right or wrong in terms of how much this thing should set. But then that time uh, that uh, the message I wanted to communicate to partner is that okay, uh, like few things we have quite a high cost. Then if you really want to, uh, reduce the price, then okay, I can reduce. But then uh, you need to take out a few things, which is the press release. Okay, I think that part is clear already. And then uh, the actual cost of our press release is seven hundred lah. Then I but what I tell her is one thousand because uh part of the reason is also because right now when we buy it, it's also a thousand. But if let's say at that point of time I wanted to reduce it to you know cut ten percent, like cut seven hundred, is fine also lah. But the key thing is uh I got plug out the things because partner go for lower price like that. Okay, so I'll set up the breakup rooms now. So set it according to LC. Uh, okay, we create. We are, let's participant manually choose room. Okay, uh, okay, I don't name the room, okay? You guys select the room yourself. You coordinate with your team member. Ah, can where to refer to the ah okay actually the social media pricing I'll cover in next week call but then if you want to refer it's here Okay, let me stop record.